listen. You are a white lady telling me what is racist to you, I which is fine. Who's been that is what homophobia and no, hatred but looks like. like. You don't think I it's racist been... if somebody turns to the leader of the free country and says, can you park my car? You know, is it racist? Do you think it's racism? I don't know. I have the black kid I raised, Whoopi. I, I have a kid in my house. That is not... The you don't have to be thing. black to know what racism yes, is. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do, no, baby. You do not. Yes, you Gather around, folks, because Rosie O'Donnell just spilled some major tea during her jaw-dropping appearance on Brooke Shields' podcast, Now What? If you thought daytime talk shows were all about camaraderie and discussions, think again. Rosie didn't hold back one bit as she took a stroll down the memory lane of her tumultuous time on the iconic show, The View. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rosie harked back to her entry into the daytime talk show in 2006. She didn't hesitate to hint that the show's dynamics weren't exactly harmonious. She didn't name names but subtly indicated that Elizabeth Hasselbeck was a prominent player in the melodrama. Moreover, she hinted at a mysterious figure pulling the strings, referring to the show being less about women's voices and more about the directives of a certain white male CIS producer, the late Bill Getty. But the real juicy bits were reserved for her interactions with the current host, Whoopi Goldberg. Rosie's narrative took a turn as she revealed her initial exit was a result of her clashes with Hasselbeck, but upon her return, it was Whoopi who emerged as the thorn in her side. These clashes weren't just everyday disagreements, they revolved around some pretty dark and controversial topics. I have the black kid I raised, Whoopi! I have the kid in my house! That is not... The you don't have to be thing. black to know what racism yes, is. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do, no, baby. You do not. Anyway, delving into the specifics of their disputes, Rosie dropped a bombshell. Apparently, Rosie and Whoopi's worlds collided over the essay case involving you know who, but that wasn't the only shocker. Rosie spilled that The View seemingly turned a blind eye to significant matters like the Rory Kennedy documentary about Abu Ghraib and the alleged U.S. torture, and even the S.A. allegations. Rosie was taken aback when Whoopi flat out refused to discuss these matters on air, while the world watched the legal battle unfold. The drama reached its pinnacle in 2007 when ABC decided to part ways with Rosie, effectively ending her contract. However, this incident wasn't the first time Rosie had aired her grievances against Whoopi. She made waves in 2020 when she chatted with Howard Stern, revealing that their relationship had been rocky from the very start. Rosie humorously recounted an incident involving a commercial break signal that Whoopi supposedly missed, leading to tension right from day one. From day one, she was upset with, like, I threw the commercial because I didn't know that she saw the countdown. The guy was, like, going like this. In the scandalous tell-all book, Ladies Who Punch the Explosive Story of the View, authored by Raman Satuta, Rosie spilled even more beans. She dished that Whoopi was anything but friendly while they shared the stage. Rosie left no room for ambiguity, asserting that Whoopi's on-air demeanor was, in fact, quote-unquote, mean as anyone has ever been on television to me personally. She confessed that even watching old clips with Whoopi made her see the negativity radiating from the screen. In an effort to set the record straight, Rosie made it clear during her chat with Stern that she wasn't seeking a feud with Whoopi. She simply aimed to share her side of the story. And as if this is not bad enough, Rosie also revealed that one of Whoopi's close friends, Ellen DeGeneres, was also mean towards her. It all started with a bombshell of a falling out, the kind that had jaws dropping and heads turning. Ellen, known for her lovable persona and witty humor, left Rosie flabbergasted when she declared to Larry King that she didn't know her, and they weren't friends. Say what? The fallout was like a juicy soap opera plotline unfolding right before our eyes. And Ellen said, and I'm quoting, I don't know, Rosie, we're not friends. I was watching TV in bed with my wife going, did she just say that? The Flintstones actress recently told an outlet, it would never occur to me to say, I don't know her about somebody whose babies I held when they were born. It wouldn't be in my lexicon of choices to ever say. But wait, it gets even juicier. Rosie's story takes us down memory lane back to a time when their friendship was seemingly intact. She reminisced about a time when she held Ellen's babies when they were fresh out of the oven, a heartwarming gesture that would make anyone believe in the power of camaraderie. Yet beneath the surface of this seemingly rock-solid friendship, a storm was brewing. Rosie confessed to feeling a sense of solidarity when Ellen courageously came out as a lesbian, a pivotal moment that should have cemented their bond.
But oh, how the tides turned when Rosie found herself navigating the treacherous waters of media scrutiny. Ellen, who held the spotlight as the queen of daytime television, seemed to have a change of heart, leaving Rosie high and dry when she needed her most. Now here's where things take a curious twist. Rosie revealed that Ellen recently slid into her DMs, well, not exactly, but you get the picture. A few weeks back, I got this text from Ellen checking in on me and all that, Rosie revealed, her words dripping with intrigue. It's as if the spotlight was once again shining on their relationship, revealing a dynamic that's more enigmatic than meets the eye. But hold on to your seats because Rosie isn't holding back on the truth, the kind that keeps tabloids churning and fans glued to their screens. She candidly spilled the beans about their weirdness, a term that leaves a trail of question marks hanging in the air. I don't know if it's jealousy, competition, or the fact that she said a mean thing about me once that really hurt my feelings, she said. O'Donnell also noted that DeGeneres told her, I'm really sorry and I don't remember that, regarding the upsetting remark on their friendship adding that she believed the 65-year-old television personality must have seen her talk about the situation on Andy Cohen's show last September. I remembered it so well, she added. I had t-shirts printed and I gave them to my staff that said, I don't know Rosie, we're not friends. I have a picture of her holding Parker, she said, referring to her 28-year-old son, who had been an infant at the time the picture was taken. I know her mother. I could identify her brother without her in the room. I knew her for so many years. It just felt like I don't trust this person to be in my world. In any case, the charismatic host of The View has charmed her way into the hearts of millions over the years, but recent events have unveiled a darker side to her that many never saw coming. While Goldberg has often presented herself as a voice of reason and compassion, insiders have started to whisper about her alleged hidden agendas and controversial statements that have left many viewers questioning her true intentions. From her outspoken views on politics to her questionable handling of sensitive topics, the cracks in her facade have become too glaring to ignore. Goldberg's show, The View, which once served as a platform for diverse voices and discussions, has come under intense scrutiny. Many argue that the show has become a breeding ground for heated arguments and biased perspectives, all facilitated by Goldberg's alleged manipulation of conversations to align with her personal beliefs. Critics point out that instead of fostering genuine debates, the show has become a one-sided echo chamber, with dissenting opinions often pushed to the sidelines. Recent events have taken a toll on Goldberg's image as well. The backlash following a series of controversial statements she made on air left many wondering whether she was truly advocating for open dialogue or merely trying to stifle opposing viewpoints. Her insistence on defending her words, rather than reflecting on the harm they may have caused, raised eyebrows among fans and critics alike. The ultimate reckoning came when it appeared The View was abruptly taken off the air, leaving many speculating about the reasons behind the show's sudden cancellation. With mounting pressure from both viewers and advertisers, it seems the network had no choice but to pull the plug on a show that had appears to have lost its credibility as a platform for meaningful conversations. As the dust settles, the public's reaction to Goldberg's alleged downfall is mixed. While some fans remain steadfast in their support, many are expressing relief that accountability might be finally catching up with the host. Social media has been abuzz with discussions about the need for a fresh perspective and a more balanced approach on television talk shows. Rumors about a potential replacement for Goldberg on The View have also sparked intense debates. Names of potential hosts are being thrown around, each with their own set of supporters and critics. The future of the show remains uncertain, but one thing is clear. Audiences are eager for a change. I hope she is held accountable for her actions. She and the others on The View have been non-caring and one-sided and downright cruel. It's time to be held accountable, one fan commented. We live in a time where talk show hosts, newsreaders, actors, entertainers, and sports people around the world think their opinion matters more than yours. This is what happens when fame goes to their heads and they are given a platform to spew their ideologies, sue her for every last penny she has. This is the only way to teach them all that they will be next if they don't sit down and shut up, an enraged fan added, while another fan wrote, she needs this. 
She's defamed too many people, usually identifying people as racist with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Though painful, this will be good for her. She needs to be held accountable for defaming people due to nothing more than her own hate. This behavior modification is way, way overdue. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.